Hello, my name is Dr. Sarah Nvari and I'm an allergist immunologist at Texas Children's Hospital. On behalf of the Consortium of Eosinophilic Gastrointestinal Disease Researchers, I'm here to review common definitions for eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases. In this video, we will be discussing non-esophageal agents. Eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases, or agents, are generally categorized as allergic disorders of the gastrointestinal tract. These disorders are named and best known for their association with eosinophils. Eosinophils make up a small fraction of the white blood cells in the peripheral blood, but are also found normally in many tissues throughout the body. Eosinophils function in a variety of ways to protect the host, including having antiparasitic and antibacterial function. Eosinophils can modify the inflammatory response and are associated with allergic disorders. In Egypt, there is an abnormal accumulation of eosinophils in the gastrointestinal tissue, leading to dysfunction. Non-esophageal agents are those that affect parts of the gastrointestinal tract outside of the esophagus. These disorders are named based upon the affected area. Eosinophilic gastritis, or EOG, affects the stomach. Eosinophilic enteritis, or EON, affects the small intestine. Eosinophilic colitis, or EOC, affects at least one part of the colon. These disorders can exist independently, but can also occur together. Non-esophageal agents are significantly rarer than EOE. Overall, it's estimated that there are less than 20,000 cases in the United States. However, as with EOE, their incidence and prevalence are increasing. Non-esophageal agents share some characteristics with EOE, such as high rates of ATP and a TH2-driven mechanism. Recent research has suggested that there can also be differences. For example, 90% of the transcriptome of eosinophilic gastritis is different than that of EOE. This is also true of eosinophilic colitis, which demonstrates significant genetic differences from not only upper GI agents, but also inflammatory bowel disease. Affected individuals also experience much lower rates of ATP. Unfortunately, the pathogenesis of non-esophageal agents is largely unknown. Agents and non-esophageal agents in particular are diagnoses of exclusion. Eosinophils are normal tissue resident in the stomach, small intestine, and colon. As with EOE, there are no unique presenting symptoms for non-esophageal agents. If an individual is found to have higher numbers of tissue eosinophils than normal, the healthcare provider should rule out other potential causes. Currently, there are no widely adopted guidelines for the diagnosis of non-esophageal agents. Similar to EOE, patients typically experience symptoms of gastrointestinal dysfunction and findings of increased tissue eosinophils on biopsy of the affected tissue. The clinical symptoms can vary depending on the affected segment of GI tract. Individuals with eosinophilic gastritis or enteritis may experience similar symptoms as EOE, including heartburn, abdominal pain, or vomiting. Individuals with eosinophilic enteritis or colitis may have bloating, diarrhea, or even bloody stools. Several criteria have been proposed for histological diagnosis of these disorders based upon the GI segment involved. For example, eosinophilic gastritis should be considered if there are 30 or more eosinophils per high-powered field in five or more high-powered fields on gastric biopsy. Eosinophilic enteritis should be considered if there are findings of 52 or more eosinophils per high-powered field in the duodenum or 56 or more eosinophils in the terminal ileum. Eosinophilic colitis can be diagnosed if there are 65 or more eosinophils in any segment of the colon or 32 or more eosinophils per high power field in the rectosigmoid colon. Currently, there are limited studies evaluating effective treatments for non-esophageal agents. In addition, there are no FDA-approved medications. Treatments utilized for EOE have also been evaluated in non-esophageal agents but the evidence for efficacy are limited to single centers or case series with no large-scale trials. Both food elimination diets and medications have demonstrated some efficacy. 
Enteric coated budesonide can be used for several disorders in place of swallow topical steroids that cannot penetrate the lower GI tract. Several medications used to treat inflammatory bowel disease have also been utilized in patients with non-esophageal agents, but these medications are generally limited by toxicity with long-term use. Although not approved for non-esophageal agents, biologics hold tremendous promise. Early phase clinical trials have demonstrated significant reduction in lower GI tract eosinophils with improvement in clinical symptoms. Phase three trials are currently underway for several agents and could pave the way for the first medication approved for non-esophageal agents. While our understanding of agents in general has advanced significantly over the past decade, disease affecting the lower GI tract remain poorly understood. Significant work is needed to better understand the pathogenesis, natural history, and long-term outcomes of these disorders. The Consortium of Eosinophilic Gastrointestinal Diseases Researchers aims to address these areas of need. Work is underway to develop consensus guidelines for the diagnosis of these disorders. This should create a framework to allow for further research into disease mechanisms, natural history, and long-term outcomes. Given the rarity of these disorders, collaboration between investigators is critical. This work can be accomplished through partnership with patients and patient advocacy groups across the country and partnership with the FDA to focus on how best to meet the needs of affected individuals.